Hi guys, it's Sherry. I hope that you are having a fantastic day. Y'all, let's do some more useful, fun, easy, and springy paper crafting. Stay tuned. So first, I would like to welcome all of my new subscribers and to thank everyone for being here because I really do appreciate it because I know that you have viewing options and you're choosing to spend some of your time with me. Thank you. So today, guys, we are going to make this super cute spring and summer journal. I love the paper because we have butterflies and flowers. And if you're anything like me, birds, butterflies, flowers, that screams spring to me. So I'll be giving you a closer look at this journal and what we use to make it, as well as how I fill the inside once we get ready to go over the supply list. But I just wanted to hold this up so that you can see how beautiful this really is. And it says on the front, true friends are the ones that lift you up when no one else has noticed you've fallen. And I think that is such a beautiful quote and it's perfect for this journal. So y'all know what time it is? It is time to make it. All right guys, so here is a close up look at this awesome journal. I am going to open it so that you can see what I have on the inside. I have a pocket on the inside where you can tuck all types of goodies. Then we have a little pocket that's attached right here and I'll show you how I did it. And it too can hold ticket stubs, it can hold receipts, little tags, anything that you want to put in it. Then we have our pages beautiful pages that we'll be writing on. I think these are absolutely gorgeous and I'll show you what they are in just a minute. Then on the inside I have a pocket folder and when you open it this is what you have. So this is inside of our sweet little journal and I'll show you exactly how we did that. And then I just tucked in a few pages where you could jot down some notes if you wanted and I just made it very simple. Just use some of the decorative paper that I used on the outside and then add it phrases to the back so that you could write if you wanted to. And then when we get to the back, we have another one of those sweet pockets. And in the pocket, I have some cut aparts, but you could put anything that you need to put in this sweet little catch-all journal. So this journal, when finished, measures eight and a half by five and three quarters, but the papers inside are eight and a half by five and a half. So what I'm using for the paper, I'm using some more of that awesome decorative printer paper that I have been going crazy over lately. And I think you will too because it's already pre-printed. And you can take this and you can divide it and you can make several journals from this one pack. I think from this pack of paper, I'm able to make six of these journals. And how economical is that? That would be six of these type journals that you can place in your Etsy shop or you can place on your craft fair table or your online website store. Such an economical way to get something that looks so upscale. And then to make the project, I am going to be using the We Are Memory Keeper Cinch. Now I know that not everyone has a cinch, but we do have quite a few people out there who do have them. So for those of you who have a cinch, this is going to be a fun way to make one of these journals. For those of you who don't have a cinch, I have numerous ways out there to make a journal that you can get that same look that we're going to have on today's project. And so here is what we're going to need to make today's project. I have two pieces of decorative cardstock for my pockets and these measure four by five and a quarter. And I have two pieces that I'll be using just as inside journaling spots and these measure four by six. Then I have 30 pieces of that beautiful printer paper and what I've done is I've cut it in half. So I have a piece that measures eight and a half by five and a half. Then I have two covers and these are chipboard covers that I'll be using to make the journal covers. And if you don't have chipboard, please use whatever it is you have available to you. But these two pieces measure eight and a half by five and three quarters. And we're going to do some very economical crafting. So we're going to use two pieces of 12 by 12 to make the journal outside and the journal covers. So what I have here are two pieces that measure four and a half by eight and a quarter. I have two pieces that measure 10 and a half by seven and a half. And then the paper that I'm using on this project is from the Fruit Paradise Collection by Prima and the SKU is 553. 
508-4915. And then I'm going to have a whole bunch of cut aparts and they're three by four cut aparts. And then for my cover, I'll have two cut apart mats. One will measure four and a quarter by three and a quarter and one will measure four and a half by three and a half. All right, y'all, so what I've done is I have raised my camera because we're going to need to see an overhead view of that cinch without the top of the cinch hitting the camera. So I did raise it and therefore the view is a little bit different. So the first thing we're going to do is bring in our two chipboard pieces and the two paper pieces that measure seven and a half by 10 and a half. I have added double stick tape to the back and I'm simply removing that. So I'll take one of my boards, place it down right there in the middle then I'll take my other board Remove that tape backer and we'll place it down as well. So now I'm going to use my stylus and when I take the stylus, I'm basically hitting it against the chipboard and then I'll drive it into the paper to create a score. And I'll do this on all four sides of both pieces. And then I'm just going to flip this over and use my big old spatula to make sure that I have a good stick between the paper, the tape, and the chipboard. So now I can take these two and just fold them over on their side just to get that paper used to being folded. And so now I'm going to do my angle cut and basically what I'm doing is I am making a cut, leaving about an eighth of an inch with the paper and the chipboard. So I'm coming in at an angle and I'm doing that so that when I fold over, I'll have a nice neat fold. And we're going to do this on all four sides. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do both pieces at once. And so now I'm going to take my double stick tape and we are going to place our tape along the four edges of both pieces of this chipboard. And then once we have that tape stuck, I will be using my big old spatula just to go in and make sure everything stays nice and stuck. So now I'm going to peel away my tape and fold over those edges. So I'll stand it up, fold over two edges, and then I'll bring in my glue because when I did the fold over, I covered some of that tape so I am simply going to add some glue right on the edge of these two side pieces just to make sure that I have a stick. And then I can fold it over. And I'll do the same thing with this piece. So I am going to remove my tape And then I'm going to fold over these two pieces. And then again, I'll take my glue, place some glue right here in these corners. And now I can do my fold over. use my big old spatula to make sure that everything is nice and stuck. Then I'll use it to go around the edges to get everything nice and professional looking. A 
Okay, so now we have our two covers. Ordinarily, I would pull out a brand new piece to cut the inside liner, but this time we're going to do something different. I am going to take those two pieces that I had left over. So when I trimmed this at seven and a half, I had a four and a half inch piece left. So I'm using these as the inside liner. So these two pieces are four and a half by eight and a quarter. So I am just going to add some tape to the back. If you want to have a full size inside liner, you need to cut your piece at eight and a quarter by five and a half. But that is not what I'm doing here. I am using what I had left over. So my piece is four and a half by eight and a quarter. So I am just going to add some tape on the inside. Make sure I get that tape nice and stuck. And I'll go ahead and peel away the backer sheets. So now I can take this piece and I'm going to place it down so that it covers that chipboard. And like I said, if you want to use a full size piece, make sure you cut your piece five and a half by eight and a quarter. So now I'm going to do the same thing with this piece. And this piece for me is four and a half by eight and a quarter. Just going to place my tape all the way around the outer edge. And then we'll cover the inside with tape. And then we can just peel away and place this down. So now I can take this piece, I am going to place it down, use my big old spatula to get it nice and stuck. And now I have my two gorgeous covers and I will take my papers and place them on the inside. And you can see that I have a nice fit on this all the way around. Now we get to use the cinch. So I'm going to try to have this in frame, I hope I am. So the way that it works is you have 12 pegs and each peg when it's pressed in and it's in the end position will cause a hole to be punched. If you don't want a hole punched, you simply remove that peg from being punched in. Hopefully you can see how number eight is sticking out. So if I was to punch something right now, there would not be a hole in that number eight position but I want all of my holes to punch, so I'm going to have them all punched in. Then we have this ruler, and you also have a center marker right there. So I know that my board is eight and a half inches long, which means that my center point is four and a quarter. So what I'm going to do is where, I'm gonna to try to make sure you guys can see this. So right here is the number four, for four inches, and my center mark is right there. So I'm simply going to slide over that mark to four and a quarter. And hopefully you can see this. So when I slid this over, I took the four and a quarter inch mark and lined it up with that center point. Now I can take my board and it's going to be very important how you place these in. So I am going to do my boards first. And when you do your boards, one of them you'll do face up and one of them you'll do with the inside face up. So I am going to take this one, put it in, and pull. Sorry if the table shook, but this thing is old and it's starting to get real stiff like my bones. So then I'm going to take my back covers because I need these holes to be aligned. So this piece is with the outside facing me. This time when I put this piece down, the inside where I place the liner will be facing me. So I'll line it up just like I did that first one. And I'm going to pull down. And 
And now you're able to see that I have perfectly aligned holes. We are going to take these pieces and this will actually punch through 25 pieces at a time. So I am going to separate some of this because I don't wanna to have to press down too hard. And I know that this is eight and a half inches long as well. So I can just put it in and you put it in on whichever side you want the holes to be punched on. So I don't want holes hitting the beautiful flowers. So I'm placing it in so that the flowers on this edge facing me, I'll pull when we lift up. We are going to have holes just like that. Now we can take these, put them in our book, and you can see that my holes are perfect from here to here, and everything is nice and even all the way around. So now we're going to place our wire coil. Now this wire coil has too many prongs on it for me, so I need to remove some. So I have 12 holes and I am going to count off 12 of these pieces. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. When I get to 12, I am going to rotate it and you'll see that U right there. I am going to use my wire nips, go in on that U and just nip. So basically what I did was I did that in half now we get to bring our cinch back in and we can put this book together. One thing about these coils, if you are looking for these coils online, make sure that if you're using the cinch, you are using a two to one ratio. And what that means is for every inch, you have two holes. So you need to make sure that you have a two to one ratio when you are looking for those coils. So I am going to bring my cinch back in and we'll turn it on this side. And I'm turning it and hopefully you can see these grooves right here. These grooves are designed to hold this. So the way that we do it, pretend that you have your book already put together, then take that bottom piece and move it to the top. And then take all of those pieces and put them down just like this. Now lift that off. On the side of my cinch, I have this knob. The newer cinches are made differently from this one. This one is probably one of the first generation, but you have a knob and it tells you that based on the, the width of your coil, this is where you need to turn the knob. So I have mine set. What I'm doing is I have the smash bar here. So I'm going to put those coils under the smash bar and press down. And that will cause the coils to get a roundness to them. Sorry for all of that noise. So I am going to take my coils, place them in, press down, And so you can see that when I did that, it pushed everything together and closed it. And so when I take it apart, I have this beautiful journal. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and just do a little something to the inside. I'm not going to do too much, just a little bit of something. I am going to bring in my two pockets that measure four by five and a quarter. And I am going to place some glue on three edges. And you don't have to do all of this. This is just what I'm going to do to this one to kind of cuten it up a little bit. And then I'll take this piece. I'm going to place it down just like that. Then I'm going to flip over to the back and take my second four by five and a quarter inch piece, place my glue, And now we can take this and put it down. And one thing I forgot to show you is that you will know that you have your coils positioned properly because at the back of your book, it should look like this. So all of the working part of joining these together should be at the back of your book and the front of your book should look like this. So you shouldn't see any of that fold over 
you should see just your clean coils. So now what I'm going to do right here is I have a cut apart and I have two cut aparts that are joined. I didn't cut them. They are the three by four cut aparts, but I did not cut them apart. So I am simply going to take these and glue them together to create a pocket. But before I do, I am going to go ahead and just take off a little bit of this. Now I can take my glue and I'm just going to close this pocket by adding some glue to two parts. So now I'll bring my cinch back in. And at this point, I'm just going to eyeball it because I need to punch some holes. So you can see that I did an eyeballing of that. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to take my scissors and just snip out a slit between each one of these holes. So I'm going inside of the hole and cutting a slit. And now what that's going to let me do is wherever I want to place this, basically all I have to do is snap it into place. So you can, so you can see that I didn't do a whole lot but that is such a cute little statement maker. All right, so then I want to make our pocket and I have a piece that measures six by 10 and I am going to score this and fold it. And with it folded, I am going to score it at four and a half. And then I'll turn it to the six inch side and I'm going to score it at one and three quarters of an inch. So now when I open this, I am going to take this piece and fold it. And then I'm going to have a center score mark coming down. We're not going to do anything with that, but we are going to go to the score marks next to it and angle in just like this. And now I'll just come straight across and I'm going to remove this piece. Now I can take these two pieces, fold them up and glue them down. I'll take my glue, put my glue on those pieces. And then I'm just going to get that stuck. Now I have this sweet little pocket. Didn't make this one as large as I made that first one. So now I'll bring in my cinch. So basically what I've done when I did that score, I created this little fold so that my holes will be on the side of that. So I am just going to place this in my cinch again. And once again, I'm just eyeballing. Then I'll take my scissors and again, I will cut through those holes. So I'll just take this pocket and I'll press my pieces in between the coils. And now we have this super sweet little book. And I have a six by four piece. I am just going to place it in my cinch, make some holes, and we're going to use that as just a journaling spot. So again, I'll use my scissors and just nip. Now I can just find wherever I want to put this and we're just going to tuck it. And now you're able to see that that's not going anywhere. And so now we can have some fun just decorating this. So I am going to just bring in one of my three by four cut aparts, place it down. I'm going to use my tape runner. Just add some tape to the back. And I'll 
gonna place that down on the three and a quarter by four and a quarter inch mat. Then I'll add tape to the back of that. And we're going to place it down to the three and a half by four and a half inch mat. Then I'll just take a little bit of my glue, place some glue on the back. And now I can take this and I need to look at it to make sure I'm getting this straight. I'm going to put that down just like that. And that is just so, so pretty and so classy. So let me make sure I've got it straight because it looks like it could be just a smidgen crooked. So I'm going to open this and we're going to add some decorations, very simple decorations. I have this sticker book that I got from Tuesday morning and it's a Maggie Holmes sticker book. If you're looking for this, the SKU is 2109919. And I am just going to go in. I think I just want to take the swan. I'm going to put that swan right there. Then I'll add a couple of my cut aparts right there. Then I'll go into this pocket and I am going to find a sweet little sticker. And this one says heart, place that right there. Then we can also place some little stickers right here. This says best ever. And I'm going to take the second one that says best ever and we'll place it. So you can see that we don't have to do a whole lot. We don't have to go through that whole process of creating this, creating that. We can do something oh so simple and have something oh so cute. So I am going to take this one. I want to add something to the back. So I think I'm just going to add today to the back, just like I did with the other one. And then I'm going to flip to the back. So then I'm going to take another one of my little hearts and just place it right there in the middle. And then again, I'm going to take a few cut aparts and just place them in the back just to add some cuteness. And you can see what an adorable book this is. And if you wanted to, you could actually go from page to page, if you have enough stickers, and just place down a sticker on each one of your pages. And I don't know about you guys, but I think that this is just so cute. And you could actually go through and just load this up with whatnot so that you can have a catch-all book that you can hold receipts, coupons, notes, anything that you want to, and then you can still journal. So I am going to just close this one Bring that first one back in so you can see just how fun and festive these gorgeous spring journals are. And you saw how easy they were to make. So if you don't have a cinch, no worries, because I have so many videos out there that will show you how to make journals without a machine. And as a matter of fact, I will link a playlist so that you can go back and check out some of the videos that I have. And with those videos, you can still do these inserts. So guys, I hope that you have enjoyed this project. If you have, please hit the like button. If you are not a subscriber to my channel, I would love to have you join my online crafting family. You guys, as always, please be safe, be kind, happy crafting, and we'll chat later. Bye.